All right, it's October 22nd. We are looking at Psalm 32. Let me pray for us and we will get started. Lord, we just pray that even in the mundane and the exciting, may your wisdom and your spirit lead us into encountering you and knowing more about who you are and how we are to walk in step with you. We pray, I pray, Father, for just a revitalization of our spirits, um, a revitalization of our hearts to know you more and to be um, just excited about life. Uh, and we just thank you. We just I pray. Amen. All right. Again, Psalm 32, it's only 11 verses, so I am just going to read straight through and then just tease out some things that stood out to me. All right. Psalm 32. It says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. Blessed is the one whose sin the Lord does not count against them, and in whose spirit is no deceit. When I kept silent, my bones wasted away through my groaning all day long. For day and night your hand was heavy on me. My strength was sapped as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will counsel you with my loving eye on you. Do not be like the horse or the mule, which have no understanding, but must be controlled by bit and brittle, or they will not come to you. Many are the woes of the wicked, but the Lord's unfailing love surrounds the one who trusts in him. Rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing, all you who are upright in heart. And as always, we look at the first and we look at the last to get to kind of go to that first place of what is the theme and the connection or how does this psalm develop over time, right? So let's look at the first verse. It says, Blessed is the one whose transgressions are forgiven, whose sins are covered. So the idea is blessed. A blessed person is a person in whom the, their sins are forgiven and whose sins are covered, meaning they're taken care of. Now, okay, very straightforward, very simple. Let's look at the last verse. Last verse says, rejoice in the Lord and be glad, you righteous. Sing all you who are upright in heart. So this idea of rejoicing and being glad and being happy, right? When you look at the first and you look at the last, especially let's look at the last one, it says rejoice in the Lord, right? Why are we rejoicing in the Lord? Because that blessed life of where the sins and guilt and transgressions or the wrongdoings that we have done is lifted up off of us, that is done by God's hands. And so therefore it's rightfully, so the conclusion is that we rejoice in God because he is the one that gets rid of the guilt, the burden of our sin. It is not by what we can do. It's not about our ability or capability. It's not about how good we can be, but it's about what he has done through Jesus Christ, right? And I know in the Psalms, the concept of Jesus is not there yet, but it's the idea that our forgiveness is in the hands of the Lord. And so we're gonna, there's many things that we could talk about in today's passage, but the one thing that really stood out to me is verse 5. And I think verse 5 is one of the most important thing any Christian could ever understand, utilize, and hear. Like, I'm going to say this right now, just, this is very important. Like, this is one of the most important concepts. This is one of the most important things in our faith, in our faith journey, our faith walk. This is something that is like one of the, I think, the pillars of our faith that we need to completely understand when it comes to Christian practice, meaning how do we live our lives, right? Let's look at verse five. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not cover up my inequity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. The idea of acknowledging the sin and not trying to cover it up. Like legit, I, I cannot stress enough, it, this is so important. Like the idea and the concept, if you look at verse five, is like the idea you acknowledge it, you don't try to cover it, and you confess it. So acknowledge, 
do not cover but confess like when you grasp this concept this will really uh, grasp and, and apply it this will really progress and move your faith forward why because i think a lot of us think about i want you to visualize this visualize this with me this concept of you carrying a huge backpack or load and that is the guilt of the sin that we commit right have you ever tried running a mile with a large backpack or weight on your shoulders probably not because you're thinking like why would i do that it's hard enough to run a mile just with clothes on right hopefully your clothes right that that in of itself is hard but imagine you're trying to run a mile with a heavy backpack or a heavy weighted vest or a barbell and weights on you. It, it's it's you don't think about that. Why please, Why would you make something that's already hard harder? But I think a lot of times the Christian, it looks like that. That we're trying to run the race of life with extra weights on our shoulders. Weights that we don't have to carry, but we do carry because one, we're either unwilling to acknowledge the sins that we commit, or two, that we're trying to cover up the sins that we commit, and three, we are refusing to confess the sins that we commit. And so we have the weight of guilt and sin on our shoulders which shouldn't be there and don't have to be there if we just admit, confess, and let go. But for whatever reason, we hold on to it. And I think two things happen. One, we hold on to it because we're afraid that if we come before God with it, that God will be, one, disappointed and God will reject us. But if you look at verse 5, it says, And you forgave the guilt of my sin. God will forgive you. God has forgiven you. And a concept that really blows my mind is not that when God forgives you of the sins that you've committed, but that he forgives you of the sins you're going to commit. It's one thing for God to forgive you for things you've already committed. But for him to look at you in the face and say, I'm going to forgive you even about the sins that you're about to commit, that's another level of love and grace that you, you and I will never experience for, in this world from another human being. But that can only be experienced from God himself right for instance if you and i got into a fight it's one thing for me to forgive you for what you've already done to me but can you imagine how crazy it sounds for me to forgive you what you're about to do to me that is just another level of mind-boggling love and grace right but that's what god does and so for, for whatever reason we are either trying to hide it because we feel guilty in the sense that we we deserve the punishment, we deserve the weight, and that God's not going to be approve, approving of us. Or two, that uh, we feel ashamed. We feel ashamed, and so therefore we got to hide. And isn't that the reaction to a lot of us, our problems, that we, we feel ashamed of it, and therefore we try to hide it, because why we feel we're going to get rejected, and what is, what is rejection ultimately? Rejection ultimately is separation. That it's, I reject you, meaning I'm going to separate myself from you. And what happens? That isolates us. And to be honest, and you know this as much as, as I do, especially in this season, that human beings are not meant for isolation. We're meant to connect. We're meant to be in community. We're meant to be in fellowship. And therefore, I think a lot of times when Christians fail, we get the sense that we can't tell God because we're afraid that we're going to be separated from him. But this is the thing. The sin that we hold on to is what disconnects us from God. Not the confession of it. The confession of our sin gets us closer to God. And so therefore, we oftentimes go through the Christian life, this journey with this weight on our shoulders, not knowing that we can actually get rid of it if we just simply confess. If we simply understand that God's love is not like human love and that He will forgive us if we simply confess. And then David is talking about, you know, bless in verse two, blessed the one whose sin the Lord does not count against him and whose spirit is in no deceit. Meaning you don't try to lie. You don't try to hide it. You don't try to cover it up. Can I tell you, man, to lie is one of the, the most burdensome things I think in the world. Why? Because when you lie or you try to cover things up, it's not like a one-time thing. When you, like, let's say, for instance, you hit somebody, it's like, 
that that the sin of like punching someone that happens in a moment right and you can be forgiven in that moment and whatnot but there's like something with lying and covering things up where it's not an a one-time thing it's an ongoing thing until it gets exposed or two it gets um what do you call it you just confess you own up to it there's something about lying and cover-ups where it's not it's now become a lifestyle where now the burden of a cover-up the burden of a lie is on your shoulders and it's not going to go away until one it gets exposed whether you like it or not or you confess to it which then is another it's another version of exposure like when we justify our sins and we try to cover it up now it's now that effect of that sin is become a lifestyle and it becomes this burden that we hold on to and that's why we have so many weary christians because of this fact that they're holding on to the burden of the guilt of their sin when all they had to do was come to the altar before god not like a physical altar per se or at an altar call but just coming before god in the private moments of life and say lord i messed up i need help and our fear is that when we say that god's like you should have known better but the reality is according to scripture multiple times over and over god doesn't have that attitude his attitude is i've been waiting for you to come to me i've been waiting to get rid of this burden that you shouldn't be holding on to this weight that weighs down your spirit and in verse three it says david says when i kept silent my bones waste away through my groaning all day long. Did you know that the guilt of sin not only affects you spiritually, but affects you mentally, emotionally, and also physically? That sin has a way of not just affecting your soul, it affects every part of who you are. Like, can you, I want you to think about, hopefully you don't have, I've never had this experience where you had to cover up a lie and that just creates more lies. And now you have to live a lifestyle where you have to keep on lying. That gets tiresome. That gets tiring. Why? Because not only do you have the fear of being exposed, but now you have this lifestyle that you just have to keep up now that is very contrary to who you are as a person. Like you have to keep up the charade. And that's tiring over time, right? Uh, a perfect example is, I mean, more. I, you have to, I, I hope that you're like a little bit older when you watch the show is a little bit mature but the show called suits and one of the premise of this show is that the one of the main characters one of is that he's living a lie where he says that he lives and practices as a lawyer but he's never went to law school and one of the major keys uh battles for the first like three or four seasons is that this guy is slowly cracking under the pressure of lying to everyone lying to the world committing fraud and you see it just deteriorating his life. Like he wants to get out, but he can't because he has to live this lie now. And it, that is such a depiction of what we do as Christians when we hold on to the guilt of sin or we try to justify it or we try to cover it up rather than just simply confessing it and moving on. I'm gonna tell you this right now, when we have unconfessed sin, it may look like our lives are moving on, but in reality, we're staying very much still. We can't move on until we confess it. We can't move on until we deal with it. We The seasons may change, but the burden is still on our shoulders and we really haven't moved on. And I wanna say to you that this is, if you grasp this concept and apply it, meaning, you understand that sin needs to be dealt with immediately, not later. And that God is wanting to deal with it with you in the moment, not later. It will break off this burden and weight off your shoulders that you should. You'll feel so free. You'll feel so like refreshed when there's confession. When there's a practice of confession. It is when we try to justify, it is when we try to hide, cover up, that we will always hold on to this burden that will over time break us down.
right? Um, and so in verse 6, it moves on, it says, Therefore, let all the faithful pray to you while you may be found. Surely the rising of the mighty waters will not reach them. You are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Deliverance is very much tied to confession. When there is a confession, there is deliverance. Why? Because confession draws near the intimate presence of God. And where the presence of God is, there's freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. And so, brothers and sisters, I really want to encourage you today. Today's practice is very simple. Whatever sin that you may have, whatever mindsets of brokenness that you may have, confess that to the Lord. Don't try to justify it. There might be reasons for it, but don't try to justify it. What's the difference? Reasons help give understanding on how to take ownership of the situation. Justification, or when we try to justify or make excuses, is that we give reasons as to why things the way they are, but we don't want to take ownership of it. We don't want to take responsibility over it. And so therefore, let us not try to justify or make excuses, but may the reasons set us up to find ways to take ownership. To take ownership, to confess it, and to let it go. And you will realize that the forgiveness of God, the power of His love, will break off the burdens that you've been feeling all this time. And I'm going to tell you this right now, a lot of us are walking through life feeling this immense burden, this weariness, this depressive feeling and state, and we might not be able to pinpoint it. And I'm not saying this is always the case, but more often than not, it's because there's some sort of unconfessed sin or not just sin, but brokenness that we have to deal with. And the bro I'm not saying brokenness is always your fault. But sometimes brokenness, sin gets, someone commits sin against you. But I think oftentimes, is more so in today's particular case, the reason why we may have this burden and feeling of oppression on us is because we're holding on to a sin that we need to let go. And don't be afraid to confess it. Why? Because you're not going to be rejected. But if anything, you're going to be radically accepted by God. And He's going to shower you with His love. And so I want to encourage you guys to really explore your heart. Let the Spirit tease out what may be hidden in the depths of your heart. That may even be hidden to you. Right? Um, I know that today when I just simply confessed the things that I've been holding on to in my life, I just felt this freedom immediately. And I'm not saying it's going to immediately happen for you, but for my case, it did. And you know, I've had moments where it wasn't immediate, but um, it, st it started a journey of freedom. All I know is that my mindset and my perspective on life completely shifted. And I felt free. I was able to kind of like <sighs> breathe again. And maybe just maybe that's in your situation too. And so... Reread the psalm, focus on verse 5, because if you really understand verse 5 and apply it, you'll realize that your Christian journey will start, not like snapping as in like everything's going to be okay now, but it gives you that oomph to try again, to move forward again, and you'll be able to, all right? Be blessed, everyone.